In the last lecture, we motivated why we want to see a differential input in circuits, and today we're going to start looking at how to create a differential input. And the primary way that we're going to do this is to use what we call a source-coupled pair. We can also do this with bipolar transistors in what's called an emitter-coupled pair with a very similar structure. So let's look at our structure. This is a source-coupled pair. It consists of transistors M1 and M2. Uh, each of these uh, transistors is connected at the source via a current source that might be a non-ideal current source. In other words, the resistance RS might not equal infinity. At the drain of the transistors, we have a couple of DC biasing resistors, RD1 and RD2. Okay, we're going to define a couple of terms here. First is VID, the input differential voltage. This is equal to VI1 or VI2 minus VI1. Of course, it's differential because we're taking the difference of the two input voltages. The common mode voltage is the average voltage or the DC voltage uh, at the input. This is VI2 plus VI1 divided by 2. Finally, we also have the output differential voltage. This is VO2 minus VO1. Okay, we can define VI1 and VI2 in terms of the common mode and input differential voltage. So we could have VI2 is equal to VCM plus VID over 2, and VI1 is equal to VCM minus VID over 2. We're going to define a differential gain, ADM, this is equal to VO2 minus VO1 divided by VID. In other words, we're saying it's VOD divided by VID. Of course, we want this to be large. We want the circuit to have large gain. We have a common mode gain. ACM, this is equal to VO1 over VCM or VO2 over VCM. And of course, we would like this to be small. And we're going to define common mode rejection ratio. This is the ability of the amplifier to reject common mode signals. So this is equal to ADM divided by ACM and this we want to be, of course, very large. We want this amplifier to reject all common mode signals, so that it, uh, such as noise, and to amplify differential signals, which are the desired signals that we're going to input. Finally, one other thing that we have to worry about is the common mode input range, and that is the valid range of input voltages. Over which the amplifier works. Okay, in the next uh, set of notes we're going to look at how the device performs with biasing and large signal performance.